you guys hear me okay? Good. Well, Thank you, Diane. So first of all, uh, welcome. Welcome to London for those of you that have come in from out of town. And welcome, I know Diane said, to the third Commons event here in London, but I'm going to welcome you to the first one of 2020. So um, for those of you who may not be familiar, we have had Commons gatherings for about four years now. The first one was in 2016. We had our first one in Seattle. And because of all the interest and the momentum and everything else, we've been increasing from then on. We went to three events in, in 2017, up to five in 18. Last year, we had seven. This year, we're shooting for nine. And so it's really a, a, an amazing vehicle to share information and to collaborate as a community. So we wouldn't be able to do that without your support, without the support of our customers, our partners, contributors, and all of you. So thank you very much. Did you need something, Diane? Set up your slides here. Thank you, Troy, for reminding me. So now if you click, you'll be good. Ah, there we go. <laughs> so um, let me go ahead and get right into it. Um, so why are you here? Why are we here? Um, generally speaking, you, know, you all have your different reasons for attending. Some of you are here to learn about OpenShift. Maybe you're not familiar with it. Some of you want to understand what our roadmaps are, where, uh, how the product is being used. Maybe you want to network. Maybe you want to know how other customers are using it. All of these are valid reasons. Um, but beyond that, the underlying reason that many of you often uh, approach us with is you're looking to provide some value to your company. And, and what that means inevitably is helping your companies kind of strike the right balance, optimize between uh, reducing costs and creating growth. And those dynamics are often uh, uh, pulling at each other, so it's not always that easy. Um, but keep in mind um, this balance and this business-centric uh, mindset as we go throughout the day, because we want to help you strike that balance. And hopefully at the end of the day, you'll realize that uh, the connections you made and the talks that you heard are helping you move things forward in these areas. So um, moving forward, uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit about our uh, vision. And we're doing something a little bit different. Diane alluded to it earlier. So I'm going to kick things off and give you kind of a high level picture. And then I'm going to introduce Troy, my colleague, who will dive in and show you a little bit more specifically about how that vision is being realized with our customers. So what is open? So uh, I'm going to talk about three building blocks of our vision, uh, open, and then hybrid, and then cloud. So open is a really important one. And open, as you, many of you know, it refers to being open source. And so the good news around that is that many companies are now embracing open source all around the world, Brazil, Mexico, Sydney, um, you know, obviously here in Europe as well. Um, and so more and more, it's becoming an accepted way of developing uh, applications, of contributing upstream, and so forth. So that's all good news. The not so great news is that because it is so popular, um, not everybody embraces it in the same way. And so there's a lot of partial embracement, if you will. There's open core models. There's an open source light type of models. There's some organizations that leverage open source but don't necessarily contribute. So there's a lot of flavors out there. So from our perspective, we're all in on open. And we want to talk to you about what that means to us. And so for us, it, it is more than a development model. It is more than a methodology. It, it's more of, of a mindset, and it's kind of in our, it's in our DNA. Everything we do at, at uh, Red Hat focuses on sharing the information with the community, building uh, support for it, and, and being able to offer value in that way. But it's not just about um, technology. Um, we, I think we saw some of the slide earlier. So there's all sorts of open source projects that are out there, and, and they're getting uh, a wide range of support. And so what we're here to do is to help um, engage in these. We obviously participate in many of these. We contribute to many of these. And we're trying to help um, navigate and provide some value to you, our customers, and our users to understand how do these technologies interact with each other? How can we get them to a point where you and your companies can deploy them um, in an enterprise setting? Uh, not an easy task. Um, and, and there's multiple versions going on with all of these projects all of the time. So um, being open for us is being able to participate in these projects, contribute to them, help curate them, and add value to our, our customers and our prospects. But beyond technology, uh, we at Red Hat are investing quite a bit in other areas that also contribute to this effort. 
and it has to do with enablement and training, offering you courses to learn how to use the technology, how to deploy it, how to implement it, how to support it, uh, working with our partners to figure out how to integrate it, how to certify their workloads and their applications on top of the platform. All of these areas uh, we consistently and continually will invest in. <clears throat> Beyond that, um, we also, so for us it's about the technology, it's about enabling, it's about the community, it's also about the culture. And so recently we've introduced the innovation labs and the whole point of that is to not just talk to you about these things, but to actually show you how to do it, sit side by side and try to create teams and build in a culture of openness and, and innovation. And so um, <clears throat> again, it's trying to set the right culture within your organizations to do this. So technology, culture, community, all of these things are part of being open. The second uh, important pillar is hybrid. And hybrid, is, there's a lot of debate today in terms of what does that mean in the industry? Does it mean on-premise versus public cloud? Does it mean multiple public clouds? Does it mean, you know, all, there's all this discussion going around. Um, for us, we talk to um, a lot of our customers, and I'm gonna give you kind of a taxonomy that we use when we talk about hybrid. So when we talk to our customers, they tell us how they're using technology and how their customers are buying services and products and, and, and how they consume all of these things. And at the end of the day, there's, there's um, a number of different ways that um, these things get brought to market. I'm gonna give you two examples. One is in the financial industry and the second one is in the automotive industry. So the first area that um, I wanted to talk about is uh, on the far left, or your far left, my right, is the whole concept of marketplaces. Marketplaces are being uh, very popular across a number of different industries. So in the financial services area, there's marketplaces to obviously buy and sell uh, financial vehicles, stocks and bonds, but also loans and, and, and other things. So there's a number of those uh, marketplaces that, we be able, that customers uh, use and they leverage and they want to be able to support. Um, and then from the service provider perspective, to be able to participate in those marketplaces is important. The second uh, is really the traditional vehicles. So physical locations, whether it's a bank, a loan office, uh, you uh, walk into a place, you talk to an agent, you, they um, provide some guidance and consulting with you and, and you kind of make your decisions and so forth. So there is a traditional model that we still need to support. The third area is more around shared resources. So increasingly we're starting to see shared resources across the industry. It could be an ATM. You might go to an airport and there'll be several banks represented there. You might uh, go to a website and start to look at loans and be able to shop for loans uh, in some kind of a shared fashion. And then the last uh, area there on, the far, uh, on your far right are um, <clears throat> mobile uh, platforms, virtual platforms, digital platforms. So increasingly everyone has uh, a device of some sort and they're starting to transact and, and, and use uh, financial services in that fashion, whether it's mobile banking or payment services and, and so forth. So this taxonomy uh, applies to a lot of different industries. Um, the next example I'll, I'll use is in the automotive uh, space. So some of you may be familiar with Carvana to be able to buy and sell vehicles. Uh, there's other companies there as well, whether it's Autotrader or Edmunds.com. I think here in the UK, there's one called Autovolo that I'm not super familiar with. But there's all these new marketplaces that are being used to be able to acquire um, uh, vehicles in this case. And there's obviously traditional reseller dealerships is what we call them in the US. I'm not sure what they're called here, but physical locations where you go and uh, you know, look at a vehicle, ask questions, maybe test drive it and purchase a vehicle. Um, there's also the shared resources model. So a number of us who travel a fair amount, you'll go and, and rent a vehicle uh, for a day or for the week. It could be an enterprise. It could be any number of companies that, that offer vehicles for a short period of time. And then the last space, which uh, I think more and more uh, folks are using, are the really uh, the ride-sharing uh, services. So these are your Ubers and your Lyfts and some of these other services that are popping up all around the world. So again, um, that taxonomy applies to hotel industry, to airline industry, to any number of industries. So again, kind of circling back, uh, when we think of hybrid, we basically are acknowledging that the world is hybrid and business is hybrid. And so we need to be able to support business in each of these environments, whether it's a marketplace, dedicated resources, shared resources, or even digital and virtual environments. 
And because this is the way that business is done, we believe it's important for the platform to support that. And so that's what we try to do with OpenShift. Um, the third um, building block, or the pillar here, is cloud. Um, so for those of you that um, have been following this industry for some time, cloud is now between 10 and, and 15 years old, depending on kind of where you draw the beginnings of that. Um, and cloud means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, we've been focused on this with the OpenShift team for the last five years, and in those five years, we've learned a lot about what the cloud means. And you can see some of these learnings here on the right. No public clouds are really the same. So using Amazon versus Google versus Azure versus um, you know, Telstra or T-Systems or any of these services, they're all very different. <clears throat> um, but we do see some uh, commonalities. They all enable a broad set of applications. They all enable community innovation. Um, and there you can see some of the other issues. You know, inconsistency across any of these cloud vendors is difficult, and it drives up costs. Um, integrations are costly. Onboarding needs to be simple. It's not always the case. Uh, everything needs to be secure, and, um, and you can see the rest. And, and this applies to private clouds. It also applies to, pri uh, to public clouds. So lots going on in the cloud space. Um, <clears throat> beyond what we've learned, we work with a lot of uh, you uh, in the market, customers and analysts, and they tell us about what are the expectations around cloud. And some of those are listed here. Um, so customers are looking for broad applications, they're looking for security, they're looking for all of these things that are listed up here, you know, interoperability and standards, um, automated operations, and so forth. So uh, what we've done is we've taken the things that we've learned, we've taken the expectations that you, uh, the market has shared with us, and we've helped build that into OpenShift. And so last year, we re-platformed, we re-architected um, OpenShift and introduced OpenShift 4. Uh, we bought a company called CoreOS, some of you may be familiar with that, and we leveraged and incorporated the best of what OpenShift had before and with the CoreOS acquisition to be able to provide you the foundation and the architecture in the platform that supports all of these market expectations around cloud. So back to the vision. What is our vision? Again, at the highest level, it's to be the de facto open hybrid cloud um, <clears throat> platform for the enterprise. So for the enterprise is really important for us. Uh, we take all of these projects, we curate them, we test them, we secure them, and we want to be able to make them, um, uh, bring them to a point where you can rely and put your deployments in production in mission critical environments and support that. So that is um, our vision. Uh, we do this <clears throat> because at the end of the day, we want to help and support you with the right platform to adapt to change, support today's business, but more importantly, support the business of tomorrow. So as things change, if you want to enter a new market, a new vertical market opportunity, or a new geographic market, or maybe a competitor uh, makes a move and you need to react to it quickly, we want to provide you with that platform that can enable you to seize those opportunities quickly. So um, that's the stage that I wanted to set. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my colleague, Troy, and he's going to show you how our customers are innovating with the platform and putting this into practice. So thank you. Good morning. So it's one thing to have a vision. It's another one to see our customers actually realize it. And so one of the things that I get to do in my work is to curate stories. And these are stories from customers like yourself. And so, one of the things that we're hearing from our customers is they love our, flex our flexibility. Uh, I would say that we are the only vendor uh, in the market of, uh, with our enterprise credentials that can, can provide a platform that you can run in any cloud. Okay, and our customers are actually loving that flexibility and actually realizing it. So one customer I'm gonna talk to you about is Hilton. Now, uh, who here has ever used the Digital Key app? Just a show of hands. Okay. So um, the hospitality industry is a very competitive industry, and one of the things that uh, Hilton was facing was a need to move faster, a need to be competitive. And here was one of the areas that they were going to try to distinguish themselves as using a digital key. Now, they looked at many other vendors, and they ended up uh, selecting OpenShift, and with that, they were actually able to deliver this uh, a lot faster than what they had been previously doing. 
Uh, one of the things that you'll hear a lot uh, during today is talking about being agile. Uh, agile is an overused term, <laughs> and we can all agree. But um, it really just means being able to quickly respond to a customer's need or an opportunity that you want to move on quickly. And I'm going to show you some examples today from customers that are actually doing this. Hilton was one of them. Um, one of the things that I love about Hilton and their story is that 70% of the compute resources they are using worldwide are on multiple clouds. Okay? So 70% of the people using Digital Key and the other um, Hilton, we actually are, are underneath the, uh, the Hilton uh, mobile app as well, are being used across multiple clouds. Now, there's a lot of vendors out there that are talking about multiple cloud and, hey, we're going to be bringing something to market with multiple cloud. Here's a customer that is actually doing it, right? 70% of all the compute resources they use are in multiple clouds. You can see some of the other vendors here uh, listed. Uh, I do want to highlight the one in the bottom. So this, this may be you, um, uh, in the sense that they were trying to do it yourself, right? And they, were, they were working completely open source. And eventually, they got to a point where it's like, you know what, we will move faster if we can actually find a platform that integrates a lot of what we're trying to do ourselves. And so uh, we want you to be consider uh, that a platform actually helps you move faster. Uh, here's a quote that you um, are from uh, X, uh, who is by Orange. And essentially, they were saying that because OpenShift was a multi-cloud platform, that was one of their key criterias to actually choose OpenShift. One of the things that our, our customers are liking is that they're actually able to deliver more features faster. And so here's a quote. Uh, and, and one of the things that I love about this quote is it talks about simplicity. Uh, simplicity is key, okay? Uh, one of the things that you will find is that the more complex a technical solution is, um, it gives you more widgets, but effectively it will slow you down. And so this is a, an example of a customer that said, you know what, when we looked at all the different alternatives, not just do it yourself, but just many, many other vendors as well, you actually had a simpler developer experience. And so we're wanting to ensure that your developers can be successful, right? And, and if you know anything about our, our platform, we, we, the, the number of languages we support, the ease at which we, we do that, it really is a simpler experience. So that translates. So one of the areas that we're uh, investing in as Red Hat is OpenShift pipelines. So this is not a do-it-yourself, but something that we have curated and again, it, we have the flexibility, so you can use different tools. We, you don't have to use our tools. I'm going to make sure that you're, we're clear on that. But it's an area that we're investing in to make sure that you can streamline a CI CD pipeline. And that will translate into, you can see some of the numbers here, of actually what customers are realizing and how much faster they can run when you've actually standardized on a Kubernetes and a containers platform. That is allowing them to respond competitively. Uh, we use uh, Tekton, um, but again, we, we can uh, support other versions. So we are very open in how you can integrate with tools that you're using. But this is a, a breakdown of how the pipelines actually are, are uh, architected. Now, one area that I want to highlight here is code-ready workspaces. This is another area of investment that we're making. Uh, and again, we are trying to make the developer experience on our platform as simple as possible. Now, this year, and I would say last year as well, but this year particularly, we, there's going to be a big strategic emphasis in making sure that your developers are successful uh, with workshops and everything that we can do. And I would say, and I will go on the record in saying that Red Hat is probably doing more than any other vendor right now and helping you, your customers, actually be successful in trying to transform yourself, trying to become more agile, trying to use uh, containers and, and Kubernetes. Uh, the, uh, the Open Innovations Lab's a great example. I mean, we are really trying to help you guys realize what you are trying to do using the technology we have available. One of the things I love to, uh, about this quote is effectively that from POC, to having something in the market in two weeks, that's pretty impressive. 
And so, and, and this is an insurance company. And, uh, and so, who would like that kind of, if you're a developer, you probably won't raise your hand, but, if, <laughs> but who would like that kind of speed? I mean, that's an incredible speed, right? From POC, here's an opportunity to we actually have something that a customer can work with within a two-week window. That's incredible speed. Speaking of innovation, here's a bank in the, the Middle East, and one of the things that they were finding was that they were not capturing the millennials, and they were not capturing that, that customer base. And, but they found that that customer base was on WhatsApp all the time. So they have been, using OpenShift as a foundation, they actually were able to do a mobile banking app based completely on WhatsApp. And so they could, you know, do banking vis-a-vis -vis WhatsApp, and they were able to secure a far number of new customers. Again, this is another sort of quote that we, <laughs> that we love, but if you're a customer, you would want to realize this, which is, if I have a concept, I can actually, unimpended, create that. Create what I'm thinking, seize the opportunity, uh, because everything has been standardized on a platform and there's no barriers now. There's not, there's not tickets, they're not, you know, there's, not, uh, there's no barriers. You can just go from concept to actually meeting the need for a customer. Operations. So you guys are going to hear a lot about operators. Uh, here's a customer that has done quite a bit with operators. And they're called Omnitrax. They're a transportation company in the US. And one of the things that they have realized, and this is another area of investment we're trying to help with IT, which is essentially create automation so that a lot of the task, and so this is, think of it as Ansible Plus. All right, so these are uh, many of the ISVs that are actually here today have operators, and it's, so it just streamlines the entire process. So you're making sure that you are actually, uh, your security is operated, I'm sorry, is, is automated, and it's very, very streamlined. We've talked a little bit about the operator hub. You'll hear more about that today. Here's some examples of ISVs that are actually working with us to make sure that they have uh, offerings uh, on our platform. And lastly, uh, let's talk about scale. So if you're, you do not scale on a platform that is, that is either um, stitched together with, with, uh, with duct tape and paper clips and a lot of do-it-yourself, make sure that you've, you've covered all your bases, right? These are actually um, customers that are scaling at very, very large numbers. Some of you are actually here. And you can see sort of where they're, how they're designed and how, how big these environments are. One of the areas that we're investing in with our platform is a service mesh. When you start getting into large scale container connection points, making sure that the traffic flows, that there's security in that, all of that is key and that's what service mesh provides. And here would be another example. So when, you, when you start looking at these numbers, think about the number of uh, container to container connections. And you're going to want to make sure that your policies are enforced in these connections, security is enforced in these connections, and optimization is, is, is uh, designed into these connections. That's where Istio uh, Service Mesh uh, comes in. So uh, with that, I want to thank you guys for your time. And I'll hand it over to Diane.